Welcome, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel. Thank you. Good morning. I'm pleased to be here with uh, Professor Yosef Klafter, the uh, president of Tel Aviv University, uh, Professor Yitzhak Ben Israel, who uh, alerted me uh, uh, a few years ago to a book, a fictional book, on uh, cyber war between China and uh, the United States. Uh, I read it over one night, didn't sleep, and said, we better do something. Uh, so we did, and uh, Aviatar Matanyahu who's here, just met me, who's a professor here, uh, was appointed as director of uh, cybersecurity. We put together a plan. It is now uh, being uh, implemented by Iga Luna, who's the head of uh, our national cyber directorate. I'm pleased to see him here too. Orna Berry, who received the uh, 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 cyber prize, uh, much deserved and so many others who are here, including, I understand, uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, is he here? Yeah, where is he? Well, Jean-Claude, you know that cybersecurity is a true blood sport. <laughs> Much worse, actually. So it's great to join uh, all of you, over 8,000 uh, attendees from 60 countries for our Cyber Week. Uh, I want to talk about the glorious future we have and the horrible threats that endanger it. Uh, this uh, conference addresses uh, one of the great challenges uh, facing humanity, how to protect our devices, airplanes, networks, anything with electronics. So today I have one message for anyone seeking to defend themselves from cyber attack. What happened? Ladies and gentlemen, this conference has just been hacked. Ironic, isn't it? A conference dedicated to cybersecurity being hacked. We are based in a country not far from Israel. That's all you need to know for now. The bank accounts of everyone sitting in this hall have just been frozen. The intellectual property of your companies is in our hands. So are your private conversations. This information is being sent to your competition and your enemies. Have a nice day. This is not far-fetched. Uh, in the jargon they say, state actors could do much worse. No, not state actors, states. States can do much worse. They can do everything that you heard here and much more. They can uh, cripple our most sensitive systems. Uh, they can even take over, literally take over some of those vital systems. And it is uh, not something that is uh, theoretical in the future. It's already happening in the present, as you well know. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't have companies. There wouldn't be this thriving business if there wasn't this um, amazing threat to our banks, our airplanes, even our weapons. Uh, Stuart Russell is a professor of uh, computer science at Berkeley, and he painted the following scenario. Uh, a very, very small quadcopter, one inch in diameter, can carry a one or two gram shaped charge you can program the code to say, here are thousands of photographs of the kinds of targets I want, the kind of uh, things I want to target. You can fit uh, about three million of those small quadcopters in a semi-trailer, semi-tractor trailer. You can drive up 195 with three trucks and have 10 million weapons attacking New York City. They don't have to be very effective. Only five or 10% of them have to find the target there will be manufacturers producing millions of these weapons. You need only three guys to program uh, and launch them. So you can just imagine that in many parts of the world, 
humans will be hunted. They will be cowering undergrounds in shelters, devising techniques so they don't get detected. They could be here in a few years. This is the easy scenario. There are worse. Now, I think that uh, we can defend ourselves against this. And I think that it's an ever-present race. It's not guaranteed. We have to keep running ahead uh, in order to stay ahead. Uh, but it is going to be increasingly challenging. The reason it's going to be increasingly challenging is because they're increasing, there's unbelievable growth and opportunity in the digital age. So before uh, we talk about anything else, I want to say that we are absolutely committed to protecting ourselves, both our country and others, uh, against this kind, this and other kinds of uh, cyber challenges. Uh, that's a fact. Israel receives today about 20% of uh, the global investment, private uh, investment in cybersecurity. That's a lot. Given that we are one-tenth of 1% 1 of the world's population, this means that we're punching about 200 times above our weight. Here are the sales that we actually receive. You see it going up. It'll go further and further up because of the, the private investment, sorry, in Israel, because of the obvious uh, need and the fact that Israel has become uh, a focal point. My goal was to make Israel, uh, eight years ago, to make Israel one of the five leading cyber powers in the world. I think we've reached that. I think we're actually maybe even further ahead on that list. Uh, the Israeli cybersecurity industry uh, exports $38.8 billion last year. Investments approaching $1 billion. Cybersecurity companies, we have about 420. International R&D centers, 50. And we're ranked uh, in the top 10% in cyber academic uh, research. We have uh, also advanced uh, in Beersheba uh, a cybersecurity center. It's a peculiar one because it has several things adjoining each other. And I'll point them out to you. First thing is we have the uh, Unit A200 headquarters, which is uh, going to be placed here. This is Ben-Gurion University, and this is right on the campus. So here's uh, uh, our collection agency. Here's the uh, university. Uh, railroad fast line to Tel Aviv. University is here. Uh, the search center here. Uh, the park is growing all the time. We invite you to join it. The leading cybersecurity companies in the world are coming to uh, Be'er Sheva. Please come and take a look at it. And uh, we'd like you to stay. There is an idea here. The idea is that within 200 meters, you can have uh, military, academic, and business talk to each other. This idea has profound benefits because people, uh, minds fertilize each other when they meet. Still in the digital age, meeting and talking has tremendous advantages. Uh, there is also a risk involved, always a risk. The risk is a security risk, especially vis-a-vis -vis our military applications or security applications that involve state uh, state security. But I'm willing to take on that risk. I take it on because, um, because I think that uh, cyber security grows through cooperation, and cyber security as a business is tremendous. We have sunk cost. This is a huge sunk cost. We spend an enormous amount on our military intelligence and Mossad and Shin Bet, an enormous amount. An enormous part of that is becoming, uh, is led, is uh, being diverted to cybersecurity. Since we have this sunk cost, we think there is a tremendous business opportunity in the never ending quest for security. Let me tell you what we're trying to protect. We're in a world that is undergoing a profound transformation, a truly uh, historic revolution. Here are the 10 largest companies in the world in 2006, five energy companies in black, one IT company, three financial, one IT, Microsoft. You move forward a mere 10 years and it's completely reversed. Five IT companies and one energy company left. Exxon went from number one 
to number five. Why is this happening? It's happening in a speed that we've never seen in the economic history of mankind. What we're seeing now is the confluence of big data, artificial intelligence, and connectivity. That is not merely transforming old industries, it's creating entirely new industries. You're sitting in an entirely new industry, a conference in a new industry that didn't exist before. It creates its own demand. It grows, probably grows exponentially. Here are some other industries that we have in Israel. We're developing them, not only cybersecurity. How about precision agriculture? Drones in the sky, sensors on the ground. We have already broken into the field of, or embarked on the field of uh, fertilization, for, uh, sorry, drip irrigation and drip fertilization too. So now using the data and these drones, we can target water and fertilizer down to the individual plant. Understand what enormous changes in productivity this gives us. And this is something that is appreciated around the world in many, many countries, in many continents. The second uh, example is uh, uh, st smart mobility. We have uh, 500 tech companies, 4,000 entrepreneurs, 250 research groups. Again, based on that same principle, big data, artificial intelligence, connectivity. So Waze was sold for a pittance, for a billion dollars to Google. Everybody understands its use, new demand, new industry. Uh, Mobileye was sold for $15 billion to uh, Intel. New demand, new industries, potentially revolutionary industries. Everybody wants their banks protected. Everybody wants to eat food at a reasonable price. Everybody wants to have, uh, to be able to move around effectively and safely. Uh, and then, of course, we have the greatest challenge, the greatest possibility of all in terms of industries, the greatest, which is digital health. We've just uh, taken uh, about a billion shekels in government funding to create a new industry. And the new industry does this. We have 98% of our population with digital health records. So you know what a person has done in the last 20 years, his entire medical records. It doesn't make a difference if you go to a hospital in Beersheba, a hospital in Tel Aviv, or Jerusalem. We have that database of uh, uh, a diversified population, our people come from a hundred lands, and it covers virtually everybody in the population. Of that, we're taking a subset of 100,000 saliva tests. So we have now a genetic subset of 100,000 to that database. And of that, we take another subset of 2,000 people and we monitor them physiologically, treadmills and the like. So we, now we have a three-layered database, general population, genetic, physiological, and now we're going to run algorithms on it. And those algorithms will enable us, we hope, to develop personalized medicine and develop preventive medicine and who knows what else. There are privacy issues here, huge. Legal issues, huge. We're overcoming them. This is the biggest industry of them all, potentially. Biggest of them all. Here are entirely new industries that are coming up from nowhere, from people's minds, the conceptual products that produce immense wealth and immense benefits to humanity. Tremendous. So the digital age is creating growth, wealth, and benefits that are unimaginable. That's why it'll continue to grow. We cannot go back to the world of levers, pulleys, and uh, uh, couriers. In fact, I, I suggest often to our military that we shoot in certain parts, but we're probably not going back. Since we're going forward, we're absolutely vulnerable in every one of these areas. I mentioned transportation of cars, but our airlines could be brought down. Our fighter craft could be brought down. The same is true of uh, the systems in every one of your countries. So we have unbelievable opportunities and we're realizing them. And at the same time, we have unbelievable challenges. And we must confront them. There will be no silver bullet. It doesn't exist. There will be no solution that 
stops hermetically any country, even the majority of attacks. It's not going to happen. We monitor the attacks on Beersheba. You should go and see the search center. We can monitor quite a bit. We can stop quite a bit. But the only way we can address this enormous challenge to enormous opportunities is to keep running ahead, to be ahead faster and faster and faster. This is a, a supreme test for our civilization. It is going to be tested not only by uh, criminal organizations, by terrorists, but by other states. We have to combine forces. This is why we're holding this cyber conference here. It is to protect the present and ensure the future. No less than that. I welcome you to come to Israel. Uh, you couldn't have come to a better place for cybersecurity. We want your business. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prime Minister Netanyahu.